so no, I have not. And you were not ultimately asked to provide any opinions on that, correct? No, I was not. Okay. Now, you did not disclose in any of the designations or your report that you had met with and had dinner and drinks with Mr. Depp, did you? I'm sorry, can you repeat that one more yes. time? Yes, you did not me. disclose in any of the designations or in your report that you had dinner and drinks with Mr. Depp, correct? I did not disclose that I was interviewed by the legal team, no. I asked a different question. Are you trying to resist that you didn't have dinner with Mr. Depp and drinks? I'm not trying to resist that, but it's not quite right. You did have dinner with Mr. Depp, did you not? I did. With and his you had legal drinks team with Mr. Depp. Depp, did you not? And what? You had drinks with Mr. Depp, did you not? Drinks were served. I. This was over two years ago. I may have had a drink with dinner, yes. In fact, you thought you had a mule something, right? Possibly. Yes. Okay. And you didn't disclose that you had met with Mr. Depp, Mr. Waldman, Mr. Chu, and Ms. Vasquez at Mr. Depp's house for three to four hours and had dinner and drinks, correct? I did not disclose that. It's not significant to the report. You don't think that's significant, correct? I don't. Okay. But you've never been asked to meet with a client in his counsel before being retained as an expert, either before or after, have you? No. And you justified that it was okay in this case because it was a high-profile case. That's not quite right. I justified it in this case. Actually, I sought consultation about it. First of all, the person who had retained his attorneys was unable to come to my office with his attorneys. And yes, this is a very visible case. It's been going on a very long time. And I understood that there would be a need to interview me and determine, make an informed decision about my qualifications. Can you look at page 240, please? Line three is my question. Would you agree it's a highly irregular to meet with the subject in a litigation? And your answer on that occasion was, I would not say it's highly irregular. I would say it's not something that I would typically do. However, I had not yet been retained on the case. This was a large, high-profile case, and I understood that I believed that it was appropriate for a person retaining me with such a high profile to meet me, to be able to vet me, essentially with the attorneys present prior to retaining me on his case. Do you recall that? Yes. That's what you said under oath, correct? Yes. And then I said, have you ever done that before? And you said, no. Correct? correct. And then I said, have you ever done it since? And you said, no. Correct? Correct. Okay. Now. Would you agree that if you did not find something that would be in favor of Mr. Depp and negative to Ms. Hurd, that you wouldn't be an expert in this case? That Essentially, I bring you into court if, you, if you're going to say that Ms. Hurd is right and Mr. Depp is wrong, correct? So as a forensic psychologist, my obligation is to the court, is to the fact finder. I present science regardless of what that science may be. Now, when I take a case, my retainer agreement is explicit about that, and I D discuss Dr. that Perry, with I'm the just attorneys. Asking you, I'm asking you a question. I'd like you to try to answer my okay. question. You understand that if you found favorably to Ms. Hurd and negatively to Mr. Depp, you wouldn't be here, right? You wouldn't be testifying. Objection to speculation. No, I, oh, okay, sorry. Hold on. The objection is speculation. I, I, that's, that's not speculation. No, I'll sustain the objection if you want to ask. Okay. If, it goes to bias, Your Honor. I sustain the objection. Next question. Okay. All right. You were, in fact, so excited about being involved in this case that you told your husband, even though this was a highly confidential matter, that you were going to be conducting the examination of Ms. Hurd, didn't you? That is not accurate. You not only told your husband, but you told Ms. Hurd that you told your husband, correct? Ms. Bredehoff, that is not accurate. What is accurate? You're incorrect. That is not correct. You, is your testimony today under oath that you did not tell your husband that you were going to be conducting the examination of Amber? 
that is my testimony. Go to page 306. So the question that was asked was because you brought muffins, you said from your husband, right? You get and you gave those to Miss Heard, correct? May I clarify what occurred so that we can stop talking about the muffins? What happened was that I was getting ready that morning. I frequently bring muffins to the office. My husband did happen to know that there was going to be a celebrity client coming in because on the mornings that that occurs, which often occurs, we have to actually clear the office and move the staff to the other office. So yes, on the one hand, he was aware of that. I was getting ready, I asked him to go to the bakery near our house and pick up the muffins for me because I was running late. He often has to do that because I often do run late. He brought the muffins back to the house. I brought them into the office. Ms. Hurd and I enjoyed the muffins together. I think I made a comment to her along the lines like, we can thank my husband, he brought, or my husband got these for us today, meaning he purchased the muffins. We are now enjoying them because of him. Did, did you say on pages 305 and 306 that you frequently have examinations of high profile clients? You wanna just take a quick look and tell us? Uh, what, 305, 306? Yeah, that's where we're talking about it. Is there a line you'd like me to look at? You can start with uh, 15, line 15, 305. Just read through that and tell me whether you said anywhere in there that you have a lot of high profile examinations. You do this frequently. I don't agree. I want you to approach, please. So why did your husband get the muffins for Amber Heard? He did not get the muffins for Amber Heard. He knew you had a high profile client and he was and you were preparing for a very long time and you asked him to pick up the muffins, correct? I asked him to pick up the muffins for me, yes. Okay. Now, would you agree that domestic abuse can be verbal? Absolutely, yes. Would you agree that domestic abuse can be emotional? Yes, certainly. Would you agree that domestic abuse can be psychological? Yes. Would you agree that domestic abuse can be physical? Yes. Okay. Now you indicated, and I believe you testified in your direct, that it's very important to review the treatment records before forming opinions, is that correct? Yes. Okay, in fact, that's the first thing you would do, correct? Not necessarily the first, but it's part of the evaluation. Go to page 261. And let's go to 260, because that's where I start the question. The question I asked was, and do you recall whether you'd review any of these by the designation on February 19, 2021? And you said, okay, I can't say for certain. What I can tell you is that knowing my normal procedure, I would have reviewed the treatment records first. Did you testify to that under oath then? Yes. Okay. Now, before we start getting into the ones that you testified about, I just want to be really clear about what you actually uh, 
have as an opinion with respect to the borderline personality disorder and the histrionics. You didn't diagnose, you didn't actually have a DSM-5 diagnosis that Amber Heard suffers from either borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder, correct? That's not correct. Your, in fact, your report says Ms. Heard demonstrates psychological symptoms of a combined borderline and histrionic personality disorder. Would you agree? Yes, I did say that in also what designation was that? I believe January 18th that report was included. Yes. Okay. And that's what you said at that time, correct? Yes. Okay. I said a little bit more than that as well. You said, and I'll read it, I'll quote it, Quote, based on the combined results of my interview with Ms. Heard, behavioral observations, psychometric test data, and review of the available records, Ms. Heard demonstrates psychological symptoms mm -hmm. of a combined borderline and histrionic personality disorder, BHPD. That's yes. what you wrote in your report as one of your conclusions, correct? And that's a DSM-5 diagnosis. And it did not say that you were diagnosing with a DSM-5 for borderline personality disorder or histrionic personality disorder, did it? That's what it says in different semantics. Oh, so, so, so what you meant to it say... It did not use the words you just said. Now, let's talk about the treatment records that you said that you reviewed. But I'm going to start with Rocky Pennington. Your testimony was that out of the blue, Amber hit R Rocky Pennington, correct? I can't remember exactly what I said, but I did reference Ms. Pennington's deposition that Ms. Heard struck Ms. Pennington in the face. In yes. fact, Ms. Pennington testified that she hit Ms. Heard, and in response to that, she can't recall, but Ms. Heard either pushed or slapped her, correct? I don't recall. That's a pretty important distinction, don't you think? My recollection is that there was some sort of violence both ways in the relationship. Either way, it seems that both of them might have been unstable. Uh, oh, I'm we, only evaluating Ms. Hurd. So, so now we have an evaluation of Rocky Pennington? No, from, I just said, but that was not relevant to my opinion because I'm only evaluating Ms. Hurd. But you testified to that on direct that that was a factor, right? Yes. Okay. Well, wouldn't it make a big difference if... Amber struck first or just responded back? Given the dynamic, not necessarily. No, it would not have. So, so now you're an expert on Rocky Pennington and her dynamics with a Amber Heard. Yes, she was the other. Uh, uh, withdraw. Okay, yeah, so now let's talk about Dr. Cowan. You not only reviewed his treatment records and his text messages and documents, but you also attended his deposition, did you not? Yes. Okay, and do you recall Dr. Cowan testifying that Amber told him about Depp physically abusing her contemporaneous with the events? I don't recall specifically his words, but I remember him recalling that she had disclosed abuse in their treatment, yes. And do you recall Dr. Cowan testifying that he received a text message contemporaneous uh, that Johnny did a number on me tonight. I'm safe in my support tonight, but I need some real help. Do you remember him testifying to that? I don't remember the testimony, but I do remember seeing that text message as one of the exhibits. And do you remember Dr. Cowan testifying that on another occasion, Amber sent him a text, Johnny beat me up pretty good last night, end of quote. Again, I... Not in this instance. She she's can rely on it. She testified... Over, overruled. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I didn't need to argue that hard, I guess. Do you recall? But that she had no ulterior motive. I actually don't recall that. I'm not saying that it didn't occur. Okay. Do you recall Dr. Cowan testifying that he believed the relationship was toxic and he was concerned for Amber's physical well-being? I do recall him saying that he believed the relationship was toxic. And you don't recall Dr. I do not. Cowan saying that he was concerned for Amber's physical well-being? I don't remember those exact words. Do you believe, do you recall Dr. Cowan testifying in that deposition that you were present for, referring to Mr. Depp, 
quote, his controlling nature, jealousy and suspiciousness, addiction to drugs and alcohol and violent and indulgent temper. Do you recall him using those terms to describe Mr. Depp? I remember thinking that would be an inappropriate impression for a treating provider of a different person to give, um, but I do recall him making that statement. Do you recall Dr. Cohen testifying that if he pushed her, she was going to push him back? And I never had the impression that she was the provocateur, but that she was indicating to me she had a hard time, you know, de-escalating these types of situations. Yes. Okay. And do you also recall him saying that she didn't say she pushed him, she just said, I got right back up. He told me that, she told me that he pushed her down and she got back right back up. I remember him saying that Ms. Hurd told him that, yes. And do you recall him testifying, you could interpret it that way, I kind of interpret it more, you know, metaphorically, that when somebody comes at her, she goes back at them, you know, in a similar way, whether it's verbally or she protects herself. Uh, all that. I, I may, I recall something along those lines, but it was a six or seven hour deposition, so the specifics are not fresh in my mind. Do you recall Dr. Cowan specifically testifying that he believed Amber Heard when she reported the physical abuse by Mr. Depp? I recall him saying that and following it up with a statement that you have to take the patient at their word when you're the therapist. You recall that? Yes. Do you recall him saying he took her, that he believed her? That he found her believable?